So closing costs, those are so confusing sometimes when it comes to your first time buying a home and even your second or third time buying a home. A lot of people don't understand what closing costs are. Well, in today's video, we're going to explain what to look for on your closing disclosure. Closing costs are confusing to so many people because they think about when I'm going to buy a house and I have my down payment. So I'm putting 3% or 5% down and that should be it. In reality, what you're really looking at is your down payment and closing costs. So closing costs, what they really are is your lender fees, your title fees, your governmental fees. There's a lot of pieces that go together in your closing costs and that's what it costs to close the loan. What I'm going to show you today is going to be a closing disclosure and every single lender that you deal with has to show you this actual disclosure. Now, every lender will have their own closing cost worksheet that they will send you initially. But when it comes down to the real numbers, the closing disclosure is the same form for every single lender. And it's a way for you to actually shop lenders and understand the differences between the two. We're going to take a look and see what they actually look like and understand what the disclosing, how the closing disclosure actually works. So, over here this is the closing disclosure and what you're going to see here is up here is going to be your loan amount your interest rate and your payment now the payment that you're seeing there is the payment with the principal and interest and that's going to be without your taxes and insurance included when we go further down that's where you're going to see your taxes and insurance and possibly pmi included into your payment and then that will bring you down to what your actual payment would be so now you can see what your payment would be and you would be able to see what your principal and interest is. And if you have mortgage insurance, you'll see what your payment would be after the mortgage insurance drops off. And down below, that's where you see your closing costs and your total cash to close. So on this one form, you're looking at all the details of basically what your out of pocket will be on your deal. But how does it all break down? So the next page will show you how it breaks down. And this is how you can compare lender to lender. So up here, that's where you're going to see where the actual lender fees are. And that's the part that you'll actually compare lender to lender to. All the other fees are all estimates that the lenders come up with. The governmental fees are usually pretty right on, but the title fees and all the others are pretty much estimates. So when you're shopping lenders, you're looking up here in section A, where you're going to see how much the actual fees are for that interest rate that you saw on the first page cost you. So that's how you actually shop your lender side by side. A lot of the other fees are all different and they're all estimated. So if you want to get an idea of what your lender is actually charging you, section A, that's what you want to see. Section A is the section you want to look at. And like I said, the rest of it is going to be ballpark estimates. So if you go down to section B, that's going to be uh, your appraisal fees, your, your credit report fees, or anything that's secondary that the lender has to use to be able to get your loan moving forward. And then if you go on down and you're in section C, you're going to fall into title cost and pest control and those kind of fees as well. All those are going to be estimated. And then if we go down into the other cost section, you're going to see the prepaids. And what are the prepaids? A lot of people don't understand what that is. Well, that's where you're setting up your escrows for your, your home. That's where you're setting up your prepaid interest. Because interest, believe it or not, is actually collected at in arrears. So when they prepay the interest, so if you, for example, if you close on the 15th of the month, well, the lender's going to collect 15 days of prepaid interest to bring your, your payment to be balanced out for the next collection of payment. So if you close in April, and it's April 15th, they'll collect 15 days of interest, and then your next payment won't be due until June because May, they're going to collect all the interest due for May and June. So interest is collected in arrears. So for example, if you another way to look at it, if you close on the last day of the month, 
there's only going to be one day of prepaid interest. If you close it the first day of the month, there's going to be 30 or 31 days of, of prepaid interest. So that's kind of how that works. The other part is setting up your escrows. So your escrows are your taxes and your insurance. And some lenders on these numbers right here will actually uh, estimate them a little off and some lenders will estimate them right. So that's why sometimes you'll see closing costs vary on these forms. And so you want these forms to actually be as close to the number as you want them to be, but they're not always that way. So when you're shopping lenders, that's why I say up here, that's the part you pay attention to because the rest of it's gonna be estimated. And some of them on the escrows won't collect enough money to be able to set up your escrow account properly so it lowers the overall look of the closing cost to win the deal hope that helps to try to understand a little bit of closing cost and what you need to look for on that closing disclosure join me next time for my next video which will be on gift funds